I remember a time when parents, loving, caring, committed parents, spanked their children when their children were disobedient, disrespectful, or rebellious. Loving and caring mothers and fathers inflicted punishment, pain, on their own flesh and blood to discipline them and deter them from behaviors and attitudes that if left unchecked would bring the children harsher punishments and greater pain later in their lives, inflicted this time by a callous and uncaring world. If a beloved child would not learn his lesson in those long ago days, a parent might be forced eventually to impose a greater punishment withholding parental protection and letting the foolish child do whatever he wished and suffer the consequences that naturally came with doing what had been expressly and repeatedly forbidden. Either way, these loving parents did not stop loving their children when they punished them. They grieved the necessity of doing so and the suffering their children's determined disobedience brought upon them. And so it was with God's children. First the northern kingdom of Israel and then Judah in the south. They disobeyed their heavenly father again and again. Generation after generation, they rebelled against his loving, caring discipline. And God punished his wayward children, imposing plagues, withholding rain, and sending foreign armies to devour their land like locusts. And at last, this heavenly father just let his beloved bullheaded children have their way. And the catastrophic consequences that came with it. Defeat, destruction, and exile. Just like God's prophets predicted. It's a story most people no longer read. They don't know what happened and so miss the point as it applies today. The point is that what happened once can happen again. When I forgot what I got spanked for, I often got spanked again. Rebellious children in every generation remain at risk of the discipline of their devoted parents, whether human or heavenly. We look at the crumbling moral and spiritual foundation of our culture brought about by widespread acts of disobedience and flagrant attitudes of rebellion, and we sense the judgment that God can impose upon our people. The judgment he has imposed on others in the past, on people that he dearly loved. What society cannot see and will not hear, we see and hear because we look to our God and listen. And we are frightened at the prospect of divine punishment, whether actively inflicted or passively allowed. Is that what we are experiencing in America and the world today? Is that all we have to look forward to in the future that lies before us? After a lifetime in exile, the people heard from the God who sent them there to punish them. Yes, they got what they deserve. Yes, it was their own fault. But now... Isaiah tells them, your heavenly father has something to say. You may be in exile, God says. You may be in a bad place, but you need to know that because you are mine, you are just passing through. Your home is somewhere else. Your home is with me, and I am going to bring you home. Listen to what God is telling the exiles, people who have spent a lifetime lost and languishing in a seemingly hopeless place. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid because I have redeemed you. I have paid the debt you could not pay yourself. I have gone your bail. I am ripping the door off the dungeon where you have been rotting away and I am taking you away from all this. Listen to how personal this is. I have called you by name, says God. You are mine. 
Listen to how powerful this is. I am the Lord your God. I am your Savior. I will not let floods overwhelm you. I will not let fires consume you. I give whole countries in exchange for you. Wherever you are, wherever in the whole wide world, I will bring you home. That's a no child left behind promise of divine proportions. And listen to how intimately loving this is. You are precious in my eyes. You are priceless to me. I love you. This is the word Isaiah brings from God to the Jews. Captives sitting around their compound in the suburbs of somebody else's capital city. But God says he's gathering up all his children from all the corners of the globe, from the ends of the earth. So God has plans for every one of his children who has gone astray and away from his parental love and protection. This father has a purpose for punishing them and he has a purpose for going and getting them. After all, a loving parent never gives up on a rebellious child, no matter how often that son or daughter breaks the parent's heart. That's not the way that kind of love works. Old Testament prophecy. The promise of salvation for people who don't have a prayer. Hope in the midst of hard times and unhappy circumstances. So, can we get in on this good news? Or does this message belong in a museum? Well, if our Heavenly Father still loves us enough to discipline us, to let us suffer the consequences of our disobedience, waywardness, and sin, maybe he will still do the loving thing and lift us up in his loving embrace when we have learned our lesson. Maybe the God who created and formed us, just like he did the children of Israel of old, will still redeem us and claim us and call us by name. When we pass through the stormy waters of life, Will he be with us too? Funny you should ask. There was a time, centuries after Isaiah, when some of the descendants of those same exiles were stuck in a significant storm of their own. Little boat, large problem. It looked to them as though judgment day was minutes away. And then they discovered that they had a savior too. They were being swamped, and the one who could keep them afloat was sleeping through the storm in the bow of the boat. They called out in their fear, and Jesus showed them why their fear was misplaced. He rose up from his sleep in the boat, as he would later rise up from his sleep in the tomb. He took control of the winds and the waves, as he would one day take control of death itself. And the kind of life that even death cannot diminish. They were his disciples. They were supposed to be learning discipline from him. Right behavior and right attitudes. What they learned that day was that winds and waves obeyed divine directives better than they did. What Jesus was saying to them was the same thing God was saying to his exiled for a reason, children. Don't you realize that living your life as though this world is all there is, is always going to backfire on you. I'm not going to let you get away with living a life of disobedience and rebellion here. Because you're just passing through. A parent disciplines a child so that he or she will not suffer more as life goes on and the stakes and the opportunities for self-inflicted wounds grow greater. God disciplines his children in the same way and for the same reason and for more. 
spiritually, we are God's children growing up in his family to live here and for eternity in loving submission and celebration. We are on our way home with our Heavenly Father. We have some wicked waters to pass through, and the waves would overwhelm us if our Father and His Son and His Holy Spirit were not with us. This life is aflame with fiery trials that we must face, but we can endure them all with God's help. And if we do, we need never fear the forever fire that awaits those who are unwilling to understand why we must conform to our Father's will. Hear this. When all you can see are the towering waves crashing down upon you and all you can feel is the horrifying feet, heat raging all around you. Do not be afraid, for I have already taken care of your survival. I have not forgotten you. I have not lost track of you. I know you by name and I am with you. I will always be with you. I will always calm the waves and quench the flames. I will give and have already given whatever it takes to save you. You are my infinitely and eternally beloved child. You and I are just passing through this life. It's a hard life because so many people messed up so many things for so long before us. And we add our share as we go along like foolish, mischievous children who can't leave well enough alone. Whatever we are going through, sickness, sorrow, guilt or shame, danger, conflict, fear or want, we are going through it. It is not permanent, however long it lasts in this life. The God who loves us and is with us will not leave us there forever. He will redeem it or deliver us from it in this world or in the next. However low we go, our loving Father will raise us up. However far away we roam from his love and leadership, he will come for us and carry us to the place he has prepared for us. When Jesus calmed the winds and the waves, men thought they, who thought they knew him could only wonder, what kind of man is this? They would learn in time. And when God spoke up and told the exiles, let's go home. And then they did. They had to wonder, what kind of God is this? Even though he had been their God for a thousand years. Frankly, the future doesn't look so good. We may be facing a perfect storm of the imposition of our Heavenly Father's discipline as the world rises up in ever more egregious rebellion against His divine authority. We have every reason to be afraid of what awaits us in the days to come, except that the Holy One of Israel says, Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be afraid. For I have redeemed you. And the stiller of storms says, Why are you afraid? I will get you through what you think will do you in. Water and fire. Waves and flames. That's what life is like because we've made it so. But we who are called by God's name have his promise. We will pass through the waters and not be overwhelmed. We will walk through the fire and not be consumed by it. Our Father is taking us home, just like He promised, through it all.